Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to a brand new Evolution of Sound episode. Today, we're going to be talking about compression, and hopefully, we can make some sense of it to you. All right, guys, so this video is called Compression for Dummies. Today, we're going to be utilizing this audio file I made that took me a while to make, and it sounds like this. Compression for dummies, compression for dummies, compression for dummies. So we're going to be utilizing that, um, that beautiful vocal in order to explain what compression is going to be doing um, here. So um, first, let's get started with the parameters of a compressor. We're going to be utilizing the Ableton compressor in order to um, show you what each parameter does. And all the parameters will be available on other compressors like the Waves compressors, the Glue Cytomic Glue, maybe an FL and Cubase, I'm sure. Because all compressors work the same. Now, what is compression? Compression is going to be the, redu the reducement of dynamic range. So, for those of you guys who don't know what dynamic range and are going, what, what the fuck is dynamic? Um, pretty much what dynamic range is going to be pretty much the lowest point, you know, the lowest volume to the highest volume. So, this is going to be dynamic range. My voice going from... Hey, what's up, guys, too? Hey, what's up, guys? So pretty much as you guys heard there, and I just moved my mic, sorry about that. Pretty much what you guys heard there was a big dynamic, there was a big dynamic range because my voice went from, let's say, um, 1 dB volume to 300 dB. So, hey, what's up, guys? That's 1 dB. 300 is going to be, hey, what's up, guys? So when compression activates, you're going to reduce that dynamic range. So my voice going, hey, what's up, guys, sounds as loud as, hey, what's up, guys? So then it's going to be like, Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's up, guys? So the volume is going to be around the same area because dynamic range was reduced. And, and that's what pretty much is happening with compression. So I'll be showing you guys some um, compressed files here. Um, so here we have a compressor. We have our ratio, attack and release. What our ratio is saying what, here right now is 2 to 1. Now, if you guys don't know what ratio means, it's pretty much a chance of, you know, something... Um, how something is going to happen so if you flip a coin you have a two to one chance of getting heads or tails pretty much that's um wait is that right two to one chance one to two chance there you go one to two chance of getting heads or tails while two to one it's like let's say you like two girls if you go up to two girls at least one of them will be into you if your ratio is two to one if two people go to the bar to get drunk there's a ratio of two to one. So one of them will be coming out fucked up and the other one won't. So there's that ratio. So pretty much what a ratio is stating in a compressor is going to be for every 2 dB, it's going to get reduced to 1 dB. So that's how we're going to be doing. So knowing that your, your ratio is always going to be two to a big number to one, then pretty much you can state that compressor a compressor will pretty much reduce volume in the initial beginning. Okay, so two to one. Now, let me go into the threshold because the threshold works in correlation with the ratio pretty well. The threshold is going to be a marker. So pretty much, let's say you're um, you're driving down a road and the speed limit is 60. The cop, the cop and the law enforcement have set that marker at 60. So as soon as you go past 60, so let's say you're going 60 miles an hour and then you hit 61 miles an hour, the cop is going to pull you over. Um, so our compressor is going to have that threshold as well. So our volume is going to have a loudness. So for and for your your um, threshold is going to be pretty much that marker you have, so that limit. So anything that goes over that limit will get compressed. So pretty much the cop will pull you over. The cop will, you know, start reducing the volume. Um, so that's going to be pretty much the marker that you set it at. So anything that goes over that will get compressed by your ratio of whatever you have. Here we have a 2 to 1. So... Anything that goes over this, that audio will get compressed by a ratio of 2 dB to 1 dB. So 1 dB will come out and 2 dB will, you know, go in. 1 dB will come out. So there will be some gain reduction. So if I, knowing that, we have my threshold down here and we do a ratio of 2 to 1. Compression. As you guys can see, this yellow thing here. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. All right, so if you guys noticed, in the beginning, the gain reduction was uh, in the middle. But once I got to this slow part where I was compression, um, saying it very softly, my gain reduction went down. But as soon as I got to this loud part here at the end, my gain reduction boosted up because more audio went over that threshold, that marker I said. So, you know, you were going faster on the freeway. The cop gave you a bigger ticket. 
Um, so pretty much that's what threshold is going to do, and that's what our ratio is doing. If I were to put the ratio infinite to 1, our gain reduction will increase dramatically, As, and I will show you guys right now. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. So you guys can see that was a tremendous um, increase in how you know in gain reduction there, because our ratio was higher. So knowing that, pretty much those are what those parameters do. Next, we're gonna have our attack and our release. Our attack is pretty much gonna be similar to what you know attack does in silent or any synthesizer. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, who don't know what an attack does in, in a synthesizer, let's just put it: the attack is going to decide how long it takes for the compressor to kick in. So we can say the attack is going to decide how long it takes the cop to start moving in order to chase you. So with a high attack, the cop will take longer to take off. So with a high attack here, and what by that I mean like a higher, you know, your knobs turn more to the right. Um, it's going to take longer for the compressor to react to something going over your marker. Same thing with a cop and so forth. So if I were to have a high attack and I showed you guys right now, compression for dummies, compression. Now here, what we're going to have is a visual representation of our gain reduction. So pretty much this is going to show us how much volume is getting um, taken away. So with a high attack, compression for dummies, comp you can see that it takes long for the compressor to kick in. Compression for dummies, compression for compression for compression and if i have my attack too high what's going to happen is you're not even going to compress anything because the volume is going to go back down below the threshold and your your compressor is going to react back which leads me to what a release is the release is going to decide how long it takes for the compressor to stop reacting to something going over the threshold um, if i were to put this in sense of a cop it's gonna it's gonna be how long it takes for them to let you go so a high release will let the a high release will make the cop keep you there for a while while a low release will you know be a fast okay here's your fucking ticket get the fuck out all right so um with a high release what's gonna happen is you know your game reduction is never gonna come back up if we have it high so here i'm gonna show you guys compression you can see it's always going to stick at the bottom. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. Compression for dummies. So you can see it takes longer for the compressor to stop acting, as you guys can see right here. Now, if I had a, a really fast release. Compression for dummies. You can see it goes back straight back up as soon as the threshold, the audio goes below the threshold, not above it. All right, so there we have our release, our attack, our ratio, and our auto is going to decide, you know, what the release should be depending on the characteristic of our um, of our audio file. All right, so we've talked about our gain. I'm sure many of you guys know what that means. That's that, much, that means how much, you know, is coming out of the compressor. Um, and next we have our knee. Um, pretty much what our knee is, it's, it's that point where the compressor, you know, the compression occurs and it doesn't. So pretty much you can have a hard knee or a soft knee. And pretty much what a hard knee it's going to do is it's going to make the compression react rough. So it's pretty much it will happen fast. While a soft knee is a little bit more smoother. Um, so it won't be as rough. So that's going to be up to you guys to decide whether you want a high knee or a low knee. And my best advice to you guys is to kind of experiment and with high and low and choose whichever you think sounds best or um, does the best job for what you're trying to do. I had it at 6 dB, which should be there by default. I regularly dabble with the knee, but sometimes I do whenever I am compressing stuff that really needs hard compression. Okay, now we have our makeup gain here, and our makeup gain, what it's gonna do is pretty much, um, it's gonna make up for the gain reduction here, and for every gain reduction, it's just gonna make it up for it, and it's gonna boost back up so you don't lose volume. Um, and that's very self-explanatory. Now, here we have the peak, RMS, and expand mode. So um, pretty much what we have here is going to be the peak. The peak is going to be pretty much what any almost any compressor does. And it's going to react by anything that goes over the threshold. So anything that goes over the threshold would get um, pretty much compressed and so forth. Now, our RM RMS works in the sense that it's going to get the average of the audio file. So pretty much the, the average RMS, loudness of the file. And anything that goes above the average will get compressed. So pretty much it's a very um, similar thing. Um, it's rarely used. I really don't use it. I would just suggest 
clicking on it and seeing if it sounds better than the peak but pretty much the rms is just going to get the average volume so pretty much um pretty much it's going to get the high part of the volume the low end divided by uh, by two i guess and then it will get a half average and then anything that goes above that average will get compressed um, next we're going to have our expand here which is going to be the opposite of a peak and what the expand is is pretty much a transient shaper now for those of you guys who don't know what transients are if i were to open up and bring up a kick so i'm going to bring up a kick right now we can get any kick any kick any kick any kick the transient is going to be this. Um, let's bring it up. The transient is going to be that initial kick. So if you guys can see this part here and then you have your base, this is the transient of the kick. So it's the part you're going to hear click. It's going to be that poppy part. So what our, um, what expand does is it's a transient shaper. So pretty much it's going to conserve your transients. Okay. So now that I've told you guys a little bit what they do, let me show you a couple of the files we compress. So, sorry about that, hit the microphone. Um, the f original file sounded like this, and let me take off this compressor. Compression for dummies, compression for dummies, compression for dummies. All right, so we can see the wavetable here. So we can see pretty much we have medium volume here, soft volume here, increase a little bit in volume, and then we have a loud volume. Now let me show you the second one that got compressed via the peak compressor. Compression for dummies, compression for dummies, compression for dummies. Now if we compare both of these wavetables, you guys can see that the top one has a little bit more dynamic as it can get louder, but the low parts are very, very low. While in the second one, we have an average, pretty much the beginning and the end are very similar, while the middle is a little bit more louder and then we have an average here between all of them. So pretty much what happened there is our dynamic range was reduced and, and since it was compressed, so the loudness, the, the loud to the soft will not be as noticeable. So it's pretty much like me going, hey guys, to hey guys, and then reducing that dynamic range and that will pretty much get you this like, hey guys, hey guys. So pretty much you won't be able to tell the loud parts from the low parts if you compress enough. And now I'm going to show you pretty much the expand, which is the uh, the transient shaper, which pretty much made our our initial, you know, sound louder. So um, you might want to reduce your volume a bit. Compression for dummies, compression for dummies, compression for dummies. So as you guys can see, there was an increase in volume and the in the beginning parts of the words were accentuated, which pretty much means they were pretty much made more obvious. All right, guys, so um, that's going to be pretty much compression. Um, let me check if I missed anything real fast. Um, bringing up the Ableton one. We have the dry and wet, which pretty much means, you know, how much of the audio file is going to get compressed. Um, very, very simple stuff, but I feel like I explained the hard things to you guys. Um, pretty much here we have um, this wave thing. It's just going to be a visual of the gain reduction. And you can switch between the, the gain reduction and the output. The oil line is going to be your threshold so you can set it and get a visual representation of it. Anyways, guys, if you guys have any more questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. In the future, we'll make a video on compressing leads, voices, and so forth. But for now, hopefully you guys can practice with the basics and let me know how you guys do. As always, please make sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash EOS podcast. Make sure to check out the podcast, submit your tracks, show support for your fellow producers, and I'll see you guys next time.